In this hands-on lab nugget, we're going to learn how to query multiple tables with the many join operators available to us in SQL. So we'll cover inner joins, our three kinds of outer joins, cross joins, self joins, and we'll look at some tips here for writing multi-table queries. Let's fire up the virtual lab and get started. From the desktop of our database server SQL Nug, let's get into SQL Server Management Studio by right-clicking on that icon in the taskbar and launching right in to our 70-761 solution. Once Management Studio fires up, we're going to be working with our fifth project here called Join Queries. And let's start by opening up the very first one here, which is going to be focused on inner joins. I'm also going to hide Solution Explorer here. And, uh, and let's get a connection in Object Explorer because we're starting to work with multiple tables here. So I want to get you familiar with how they are tied together through relationships. So let's drop down the Connect button there in Object Explorer, hit Database Engine, and get a connection right to it. So we're going to start here with the Wide World Importers database, and we're going to be using two tables. So we'll start with a very basic inner join here, customers and customer categories. Let's say you've been tasked with uh, writing a query that will pull back customers and their categories. How would you go about writing this? Well, the first thing you'll do, want to do is obviously get familiar with these tables, as well as the relationships between them, so you know what you can potentially join on. Let's use Object Explorer here and expand databases and expand Wide World Importers and expand database diagrams. I created a couple of them in here. And let's open up the first diagram here, customers, categories. This again will give us a nice bird's eye view of these tables. And if the relationships were set up appropriately, then you will see these linkages. And what we can see here is in our customers table, we have a customer category ID. This is a foreign key to the primary key of customer category ID in the customer categories table. And you can actually look at this linkage here and, uh, and right click on it and go into properties that'll swing out the properties window and if you expand tables and columns we can see our customer category id is the primary key in the customer categories table and there's our foreign key in the customers table so that uh, that alone should give you an idea of how we're going to write the query to link these together on those columns those are the common columns between these tables notice we also have a self join set up here more on that one later, but let's close out of this database diagram. Let's head back to our query. Let's uh, change our connection context for this query to wide world importers. And then our first query, very simple here, is going to pull back the customer name out of the customer table and the category name out of that category table. And we're going to link these together with an inner join operation on those common columns across those tables. Also notice here that we're using an alias, which uh, just makes our query a lot more readable in this case, because we can use the alias to reference the columns from those specific tables rather than using the fully qualified table name. All right, so this looks good here. Let's go ahead and highlight this, hit execute, and there it is. There's our customers and there's the categories that they belong to, all because of an inner join between those tables. Now, this is the recommended way to write our queries today using the join operator with the on keyword to specify what columns we're joining on. This is still supported. This is the old school way of writing joins where we specify our tables, common delimited in the from clause, and then use a where clause to tie our common columns together. This still works, but don't use this. And I only point this out because you may see this when supporting older databases. And you'll even see here that we will get the exact same result as we did previously. There it is. Now let's crank it up a notch and write a query that targets four tables. So we're going to head down here, switch our connection context to AdventureWorks, and I also want to just get you familiar with these tables. So over in Object Explorer, let's expand AdventureWorks, expand database diagrams, and here we have the, uh, the second one here, Product Category Inventory Diagram. If we open this up, we're going to see all four of these tables. Now when you're designing a big complex query that's going to require access to many tables, what you want to do is work with one table at a time. And start with your base table, right? And in this case, our base table, if we flip over to our query here, is going to be our product table, right? That's our initial table. And then you can start adding in the, the tables that you need to pull columns from. And if you get to the point where there's a table that is going to require other tables, and you're not really sure the path that you need to take to get there, for example, in order to get to our category table, we don't have a category product category ID column in here, we need to go through our subcategory table to get there. Well, this is again, where you can look at the relationships for this table. So if we right click on our product category table, we can head up here to relationships, which will open up a dialog and show us that this connects to the subcategory table, Then we can go into that table, look at its relationships and find its linkage back to our product table. It's a great technique to use when you begin writing queries 
for the first time in a database design that you're still unfamiliar with. Another thing that's useful for understanding the kind of join that you're going to need is looking at the nullability of your foreign key columns. In other words, let's take a look at our subcategory table here. Let's right click, choose table view and standard. We can see that product category ID is not nullable, which means a subcategory must belong to a category. So it's pretty much only going to make sense to interjoin these tables together. If we look at our product table, on the other hand, and do the same thing, and look at our subcategory ID, look at this. I know it's tough to see. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Subcategory ID is nullable. So what this means is that if we do an inner join on this table to subcategory ID, we're only going to get records where our products have that subcategory ID. So that may be a good candidate for a left outer join if we're writing a query that needs to include all the products, whether they have a subcategory or not. Also looking at our product inventory table, notice that the product ID is part of the primary key of this table. So we've got a one-to-one -one relationship between product and product inventory. In other words, we could potentially have products that don't have inventory. So this may be another candidate here for a left join. Again, if we want to include all products in the final results of our query. All right, let's go check this out here. So now we have an idea of how we're going to link these together, right? So if we head back to our query and we check this out, you can see we're interjoining everything right now. So we're interjoining product subcategory on the product subcategory ID across this and the product table. Product category, we're interjoining to the product subcategory. And product inventory, we're also joining to our base table here, product. So right by default, because these are all inner joins, we're only going to get back products that have inventory that have a subcategory associated with them, 460 total records. All right, moving on, we have another multi-table query here that we're going to look at, only this one is going to require multiple join conditions here on our special offer product table, and that's because we have an intermediate table with a composite primary key. So we're going to need to join this table with two columns, which is why we have an and here after the on keyword. Let's get familiar with this table structure here. If we head over to our database diagrams, this is going to be called product sales specials diagram. Again, here are these four tables. And what we're aiming to do here is write a query that shows us products that were sold with a special offer. So if this is our leftmost table in the query, in order to pull back the description of our special offer and the name of our product, again, we need to go through this intermediate table, which contains a composite primary key. That's a key consisting of two or more columns, in this case, two. And again, we can verify that by looking at our relationship. If you right click on that relationship and head into properties and expand tables and columns, there it is. We can see that this relationship consists of both special offer ID and product ID here in this table. And that's how we're going to need to link it from sales order detail using the product ID and special offer ID out of that table. Once those are linked, we can then perform inner joins on our other tables to pull out the fields that we need. So let's go ahead and close out of our diagram and head back here to our query. And that's exactly what we have going on here. We're linking special offer product to sales order detail on both of those columns, then product to special offer product on the product ID and our special offer through the special offer uh, ID column on both of those tables as well. And we also have a where clause in here to, uh, to filter out anything that does not equal one. One means no discount. So, so if we were to just execute this without that filter, it's going to pull back, still pull back absolutely everything, 121,000 sales. And you can see most of them are going to consist of no discount. So that is special offer ID number one. And if we put that filter on there, this should only return a little over 5,000 records. So these are all the products, all the sales that were offered with the discount. You can see the description of that special offer over there on the right. There's the product name and there's the sales order ID. So those are inner joins. Let's move on and take a look at outer joins. I'm going to hit Solution Explorer and open up O2 Outer. SQL. We're going to bounce back to the Wide World Importers database once again. So let's hook this query up to that database. There we go. And also over here in Object Explorer, let's head down to Wide World Importers and expand database diagrams. We're first going to be working with customers and their contact information. So two tables here, the customers table and the people table, which stores their contact uh, information. So let's start here by opening up our database diagram, customer people. You can see here's both of these tables. We have quite a few relationships set up between these tables, relationships that reference themselves. Again, more on that when we get into self joins and relationships that reference each other. And if uh, whoever created these relationships, name them accordingly, you should be able to identify 
uh, based on the name here, which you can see in the tooltip. So here's the relationship between the contact, the primary contact ID. So this ID right here references the person ID in the people table. So that will tell us who their primary individual uh, for contact is. And then here's the alternate one, which is this relationship down here. So that's what we're going to be working with here for these outer queries. The first one we're going to write here is a very simple inner join just to show you that uh, and get some context here. This will return all customers that have both a primary and an alternate contact because we're performing inner joins for both of these tables, one against the primary contact ID and one against the alternate contact ID. And the result here is 402 records. Again, only customers that have both a primary and alternate contact. But this alternate contact person ID is nullable in the customer table, meaning there could be customers that don't have an alternate contact. And what if we wanted to get a list of those or a list of both a customer with a primary contact ID and then with or without an alternate contact ID, that's where a left join can come in handy. And that's what our next query is doing. So this time we're inner joining for the primary contact person ID, which is fine because uh, this is actually a non-nullable field. So every customer must have a primary contact, but there may or may not have an alternate contact. And that's why we're performing a left join. And this should give us a lot more than 400 results. And there it is, 663. Now we're getting customers that may, that do, or don't. These customers that have null in their alternate contact field here were not returned in our previous query. And you can see we have quite a few of them in there. Now, what if we wanted to write a query just to identify those with a primary contact ID and those without an alternate contact ID? This is where that null predicate comes in handy. And here it is. We can search for null values here for the alternate person contact ID, which will then give us all of our customers who only have a primary contact ID. See that? So that's where that null predicate can come in handy. Moving on, let's take a look at a right outer join. This time we're gonna be working with the, the customers table and the customer categories table. We worked at these before and you can find them in the first database diagram here. But this time what we're gonna say is our customer categories table is the right table. So let's say we wanted to identify categories first with or without customers. Remember, this will show us all matches and anything that doesn't match. And if we execute this, anything with a null value are customers that do not have that category. So there are no agents and there are no wholesalers uh, as customers with those categories. And of course, we can identify just those by adding a null condition against any column out of there from our customer table, since that is the left table in this case. And we're right joining to it with the customer categories. And this will return us with, oh, and there was one more in there as well, general retailer. So those are the categories without customers. So again, left and right join, it just depends on which table you place in the left and which table you place on the right. And finally, we have a full join, which again is essentially just a left join and a right join simultaneously. So our previous query written with a full join will give us customers with or without categories and categories with or without customers. And if we execute this, really, we're going to get the same results as we did before. Uh, there's those three categories without customers. And there are no customers without categories because it is required. But again, we could add a null condition onto either side. If we add it on one side, it's a left join, add it to the other side, it's a right join. But if we add this to both sides, it'll allow us to identify records that do not exist in either table. And in this case, we're gonna get the same results as a right join, because again, customers uh, must have a category, but categories can be without customers, which is why we get that. And those are all of your outer joins. Let's look at our special join types here. If we head back into Solution Explorer, let's open up our third query, cross-self, Dot SQL. And let's start here with a cross join. Let's say, for instance, that we wanted to uh, get a list of all stock items with all of their colors. Now, we're just going to do this for one supplier because if we didn't, we would get an unbelievable amount of records. Uh, but this will return us with eight records. And we first need to switch our database here to the wide world importers. But our first query here is going to return us with uh, all the stock items from supplier ID 1. There's a grand total of eight. And then our colors, we have a grand total of 36 colors. So if we were to cross join all of the items with all of the colors for supplier ID one, the grand total is gonna be eight times 36, which is gonna be 288 records. Every single item for supplier ID crossed with every single color in the colors table. And finally, we have a self join. Again, let's open up the database diagram here for either one of these will work because the customer table is in both of them. But if we look at this, join right here, this relationship, I should say, you can see that it's referencing itself, 
we have a column in here called build to customer ID. Customers are billed to other customers, right? So this is why it's referencing itself. This is actually a customer ID inside of this column. So when we write our join, we're going to reference the same table twice, and we're going to join the customer ID to the build a customer ID, and that will show us customers that were billed to other customers. And if we close out of this and head back to our query, that's exactly what we're doing here. You can see our left-hand table is sales.customer, and then we're joining to another instance of that customer's table on the right-hand side, and we're joining the customer ID to the build to customer ID column. And the results of this are customers that are billed to other customers. You can see we have our satellite offices that are all billing to the head office. And as you scroll down, you'll see individual customers are billed to themselves. All right, let's finish this nugget up with a look at your SQL challenge. Let's bring out Solution Explorer, open up 04 SQL at SQL, where your mission is going to be to write a query that targets three tables. They're gonna pull back employees and their personal information. So it's gonna be a bunch of inner joins here between employee, person, and email address pull back these columns so we can get a nice complete employee record. Also, if you're not sure how to link these tables together, what you can do is expand AdventureWorks, head into database diagrams, and there's an employee diagram waiting for you. So you can use this diagram and these relationships to find out which columns you should join on to bring all these tables together. So now's a good time to pause me if you want to try this out on your own. If not, we're going to do this one together. All right, let's do this. Now, the absolute best way to become a SQL Ninja when you're training is to type everything out by hand. So I would advise doing that uh, because you'll commit the structure of SQL to your muscle memory and your physical memory, but I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me type all of this out. So there is a simple solution. And again, if you're not comfortable with writing Transact SQL yet, feel free to use the query designer here and watch it write that SQL for you. So here's what our query looks like. We're grabbing the employee table. That's our leftmost table here. So that way we can grab the job title and the hire date. Then we're gonna join the person table to that employee table by performing an inner join on the business entity ID column between these tables. From there, we're gonna join the person.email address table. So we can get the email address of our employees. We're joining that to the employee table using an inner join again on that same column. And that's what allows us to pull out the email address. Person allows us to pull out their first and last name and again, employee job title and hire date. We don't need to highlight this because I didn't switch our connections here. So I'm gonna hit execute, which will switch our database connection and then execute the query. And there's the result, 290 records, all of our employees with their first last name, job title, hire date, and email address. In this hands-on lab nugget, we covered the many flavors of the join operator and how we can use them to write queries that target multiple tables. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.